This is the new 2022-2023 VW Golf R Mark 8, the most popular hot hatchback car in the world. With the Golf's recipe already fantastic, it's hard for the VW to change much and not make it worse. So does this new Golf R maintain the qualities that VW users are looking for? Does it live up to the expectations of its older brother and sisters? I'm gonna tell you guys everything you need to know in this video. But first, be sure to subscribe and like the video if you do enjoy these. And also turn on your notifications for weekly car reports. On first appearance, it doesn't look much different to the Mark 6 VI and 7. The shape and overall design is still Golf, with purposes a bit more resolved around the edges. If you're jumping between the non-performance and performance pack, it starts to get rather an aggressive tone. Round the front, we have a lower bumper with curled up fins, which other rivals such as Audi S and RS3 have been removing over recent years more narrower LED headlights, which just might be as bright as an Audi. The bonnet has done a few rounds in the tumble dryer though, now being compact and smaller, although it does outline some great detail lines, presenting, as a lot of people say, in the car design world, a big forehead, due to it being more wider than longer. Go for the performance kit, which have larger exhaust tips around the back, where things start to pick up its expressions. A more flared out spoiler with carbon trim, raised limiter, increased to 19 inch alloys over the standard 18 and extra driving modes too. Also, VW seems to be sticking with the model names in the center around the back, first seen on the car models in 2020. However, when it comes to the alloys, hardcore golf fans will be heartbroken to find out you only have two choices of alloys, diamond cut or black. The engine is exactly the same as found in the Audi TTS. It's a four-cylinder, two-litre turbo petrol engine with slightly more performance over the Mark 6 VI and 7, producing 316 brake horsepower and 311 pound-feet of torque. The transmission is a twin clutch with seven gears at your disposal. However, it's a sad time indeed, as you'll now have to rely on the computer changing gears for you due to VW stopping the production of manual gearboxes in the Golf R's, period. The VWR offers modes such as comfort, sport, race, and individual. Although, if you do upgrade to the performance pack, you get special and drift on top. Special configures the car for race tracks and drift, well, if it ain't obvious, it allows you to drift the car better. The brakes are not much larger over the Mark 6 VI and 7, featuring 375 millimeters fitted with lighter calipers too. Furthermore, the gear changes are effortless with no feeling for them at all. But the turbo response is very delayed. This is done due to the gas particle filter across all these models. The passive dampeners come standard, though you can choose for adaptive ones through the performance package. There's a new feature too, called the turbo vectoring rear differential, which extensively allows you to throw all of the drive power to the rear wheels through corners. Overall, weight of this new Golf R is 1,470 kg, which is neither impressive nor or bad. The R will do a 0-62 miles an hour in just 4.6 seconds, with the help of all-wheel drive, dual-clutch transmission, and a higher-end turbo. Similar to the Audi S-Line, performance through the gears is very laggy. It takes some time before the turbo throws itself into the mix. On kickdown, the 2-litre is working alone at first, and then the turbo comes into play, like a delayed answer from an older relative. To be fair, now saying this, a lot of new cars I've reviewed recently have had the same sort of sluggish feel from the turbo. The new Audi RS3, BMW Z4, and Nissan GTR. So I went about doing some more research, and it's because of the CO2 brackets. The modern sports cars want to be in the lower CO2 brackets for them to become more affordable and show higher results of MPG. If you find it being too sluggish most of the time, drive the car in race mode, as it holds at higher revs and keeps the turbo response just that bit quicker. First of all, this car handles quite badly. Like, unless you really know your way around the ESP system, that's the only way you're going to enjoy this ride. When entering the vehicle, your body gets filled into these amazing bucket seats. Black and blue patterns with R logos in the middle. It's comfy with enough legroom for six foot drivers too. However, you won't be able to get three door models anymore, as VW have stopped this. The new Golf R will only do five door hatchbacks available to buy. You happily find the start button and a bit of a disappointment, sort of whine happens. Nothing like an M Sport or Mercedes Mercedes AMG fired up through the exhaust. But on a cold morning after 10 seconds, it has a subtle sporty tone during idling as it's warming up. Select drive, e-brake down, and away you go. Adjusting the ESP is a real pain. The central display takes you through a range of choices. It's a long process and takes up to 60 seconds going through options at one time to get the right setting for you. In comfort, the Golf is refined, slick, quiet, and making the drive effortless. 
The engine will coast at times in order to save fuel, but this is a great sports car for motorway driving too, especially on the upgraded 19-inch wheels. This is a car to be driven in comfort over race or special. You seem to get more of a connection with the road in comfort settings. In race or special mode, the car feels too fussy, like it can't make up its mind with all the options you've selected and it wants to do. However, some owners may enjoy being able to play around with lots of different options, as I'm sure you can be sat for hours trying and testing all the different combinations of the ESP modes. Through corners, the car oversteers, if you brake too hard. The power comes back in early due to being held at higher revs, but it's like the tires are being dragged along the floor by its parent because it doesn't want to go to school. Find the correct race or sport mode that fits for you, adapted dampeners and steering ratio comes into play. The steering gets heavier and the car puts more pressure. However, compared to the MK6 and 7, it's not as playful or fun in drift mode too. Even with the new reinforced subframes at the front, upgraded bumpers for aerodynamics, the technology of this car just really lets it down. The basic driving fundamentals are there, but the technology is lacking. VW, you've overcomplicated this one. Compare your drive to an older Mark 6 or 7, you'll find yourself wanting one of those to drive instead. After talking about a lot of negatives on this car, let's list something that's good. The MPG on this Golf R. The use of eco modes and dual clutch allows for an amazing high of 37 miles to the gallon. On motorway drives, you'll easily see it in the 40s. Well done, VW. At least you got something right with this car. However, with your heavy right foot, it will even drop down to the low and mid 20s. First greeted on the inside with highlights of blue. Now, personally, I love this because that's my favorite color. The seat stitching, display and dashboard outline, but does it mean it's all that good? The interface on the touchscreen is slow. Like we're talking Toyota and Intel Core i3 slow. If you don't have any patience at all, you will very quickly be ticked off by this whole system. You can't even change climate control options in a hurry either. You need to go through a whole interface menu and find it. Unless you're never in a hurry or a rush, this interior is for you. It's pleasing to the human eye, yes, but usability is beyond shocking. Driving around a twisty, bumpy B or C road, you get no chance of changing the correct settings first time, even if you're tech savvy. No dials at all. Volume control, music selection, skip, pause, play, all located on the screen. And that's even if it registers it first time. Personally, VW, just scrap this and let's start again. Starting prices for these new 2022 and 2023 VW Golf R's come in at just over £40,000. With the idea of the manual and the three-door gone away, you'll have to be a lover for five-door hatchbacks that are automatic. VW is known for doing great PCP and leasing options, meaning if you don't have £40,000 to spare, VW can offer great monthly payments with not a large starting deposit. But personally, don't waste your money on a new Mark 8 Golf R. Grab yourself an AMG A35, BMW M135i or an Audi S3. Or if you want to save your money even more, you can't go wrong with the old VW Golf R Mark 6 or Mark 7 at a pre-owned dealership in this day and age.